test. There we go. We've got some audio. Thanks, Adam. Appreciate the heads up on that one. So uh, as you're looking at Service Autopilot fully set up, um, we are going in from the left-hand side of the screen here and setting this up. So from the left-hand side, we are going to be looking at uh, all the way from lead acquisition off your website through billing fulfillment. So the first thing here is on the left-hand side, estimate request. So the estimate request, whether you set up yourself or have someone like Simple Growth do it, uh, should be going in and uh, grabbing the contacts information and automatically entering them into Service Autopilot with no double entry. In addition, it should be tracking the sales source. So obviously off the website, that's going to be lead source acquisition from your website. Conversely, on the bottom here, when the client calls, there are certain things that you need to have set into the system from day one immediately for success to build upon. So this is how we set the foundational parts of the system up for success. So when the client calls, we should be entering certain information, including how they heard about us. So now right from the beginning, we know how many people came from each marketing source. So whether they saw your truck, a Facebook ad, a door hanger, a customer referral from existing client or lead, we have all the data. Then in addition, the system will be able to track how many of those people actually converted into a client. And if there was a paid marketing source, we can go in and actually see uh, how many of those people became clients and the cost per acquired client. And once you have enough data in the system, we can then see um, what the lifetime value, the client lifetime value is per marketing source. So maybe from a home advisor, you have a, a $25 or $30 lead and their client lifetime value is maybe only a $250. But maybe you have a $110 client acquisition from say a Facebook ad, but that client acquisition may last six to seven years and be worth eight to nine, maybe $9,000. So obviously we can play the math game of what the cost is per acquired client per marketing source, the closing ratio on average. And in addition to that, uh, we can figure out the client lifetime value. So that's going to give you some of that granularity that you want when you're looking at um, that fully set up system. The next thing is whether they came off the website or the client calls, we've entered them now into service autopilot. So whether it's the manual process off the website or, um, or the manual process from the office or automatically off the website, they're entered in the service autopilot. So the next thing we're looking at is estimate creation. So estimate creation is when we're going to go in and tackle those things such as custom fields or job variables. And these are going to be the things such as turf square footage or uh, linear length of bed or number of small, medium, and large shrubs. Or if you're in the home cleaning industry, it's going to be the square footage of the home, number of bathrooms, maybe number of people living in the home or number of pets. Whatever that variable is in your business that would create a standardized estimating system, we are going to go in and um, look at that. The next step is once we have that behind those numbers, we want to create a price matrices. So um, it can be done in several different variables. And most people that come to uh, work with us, um, including myself, have in the past looked at three different ways of estimating. And the first is probably the least preferable, but let's be honest, this is pretty much what we all did when we first got into business. So we would go out and look at a yard, let's say for lawn mowing and say, based on my market or industry experience around what people are charging around me, I'm going out and saying that's about a $35 cut. So that's what I'm going to charge. Obviously not the way to go about it, but that's usually how we all start. The next step is, is we go out and look at that lawn and say, well, based on my experience of doing this service, um, I think it's going to take me about an hour to mow, blow, and edge that lawn. And if my goal is $50 per man hour, then um, I'm going to be able to say, okay, an hour times 50 bucks, I should charge $50 for this lawn mowing. So that's usually the next step. So the service autopilot, when set up correctly by a certified advisor, such a service autopilot can be gone in and estimated off what's in your head based on minutes and hours. And when you enter that information into an on-site estimate form, when you pull up the estimate, it will calculate the price, the budget of time and cost before profit, including materials or products. And then the third and final step really is going in and uh, creating a standardized production rate based off your numbers or maybe industry averages. Predominantly, we like to do it off what your numbers are based on your equipment and your guys and girls in the field. And by being able to do that, we can go in and build those production rates in the back end of the system. So when you enter in the turf square footage or number of small, medium, and large shrubs, 
or the square footage of a home in a home cleaning scenario. Uh, when you pull up the estimate, it automatically calculates the price, the budget, the time, and cost before profit. That is going to create a, a standardized delegatable system that can be done um, for by yourself or by a team. So once we built out those custom fields here and those job variables, we go in and hit add an estimate. Then we'd go in and select a template. So pre-built when Simple Growth builds this out, we have at least two templates, one for leads, one's for clients. Those are two significantly different conversations in my opinion, because if someone's a client who's never done work with you um, or a client that already has done work with you, we give the ability to have a separate marketing conversation based on where they're at in the customer life cycle. So once we selected that template, all your services load, and if you put in the variable data such as minutes or hours, turf square footage, square foot of home, number of small, medium, large shrubs, so on, the system will automatically calculate the price based on your numbers. And it will give you a price, budget, time, and cost before profit. Once that's done, obviously you want to close them over the phone or in person. But if we can't, we go in and save that estimate and we're going to email it. So we hit the email button. And when we hit that email button, a pre-templated email loads with standardized marketing copy. Once again, based on a lead or a client, because that's a separate communication based on customer life cycle. As this loads in, you can add into it on the fly, but predominantly what we really want to do is set it and forget it and standardize our marketing copy and workflow. Uh, we tweak it and send. Now, when the estimate is lost, obviously that's not the preferred method. We go out and um, teach a process to close out that lead. So when that lead is closed out, you have a very clear picture of exactly how many leads are in your system that can become clients and then how many uh, people in the system um, right now are going to be basically put into a long-term nurture to nurture and upsell down the line. But right now we want to be able to close that lead out. So we have database hygiene. We have a really good look at what is an actual person that could convert into the lead in the next say 20 to 30 days. Now, obviously the estimate one is the preferred methodology. So once that's set up, uh, we go in and basically force you or teach you how to schedule off the estimate. There's two main reasons that we're going to do this. The first of all is we want to make sure we don't have duplicates in the system. Um, once again, database hygiene. So that lead has to be converted into a client for lead conversion tracking and reporting and Mrs. Smith won't be a lead and a client in the system. In addition, when we go in and do that, and schedule off that estimate. It's going to force us to do that. And when we schedule from the estimate, the price, the budgeted time, and cost before profit automatically transfer over to the actual estimate or the job itself and any products or materials. So this way there is no double entry. It's a streamlined workflow. And what should go from your estimate to the job is there each and every time with no error. The next thing here is... Um, Basically, when we go in, we're going in to uh, schedule the work. So as we go in and schedule the work, we are going to uh, teach the main methodologies of uh, scheduling in service autopilot. So there's three or four main types of scheduling. The first one is a one-time job. So you know the day that's happening. The second one is a reoccurring job, such as weekly or biweekly or any reoccurring service. The next one is a waiting list job. So going into the spring, maybe we have a spring cleanup. Maybe the spring cleanup doesn't have to be done today, but it's got to be done in the next 30 days. So we can set a time parameter of when that job should be done to go in and optimize your routing and minimize that non-billable drive time. And then in addition, we have packages, jo package jobs. So those could be your fertilization. So maybe your first round of pre-emergence between April 1st and April 30th doesn't have to be a specific day, but we want to route for efficiency or certain things like bed maintenance packages or shrub pruning packages. Uh, we have different rounds that need to happen and we're able to do that and use a waiting list functionality for optimization. When we go in and route, we go in and select the jobs on the map. And we use several of the different um, free and paid optimization features in Service Autopilot. So the first one that we use is the free optimization. It covers up to 23 uh, positions and it goes in and allows you to route uh, systematically from your shop all the way through the jobs and back. The next one is going to be the paid optimization, more than 23. Uh, with the Maps Pro feature. Same thing, just a little more functionality and robust feature. And then the next one is manual routing, where you can drag and drop. The fourth is group optimization. 
This is something that works as advertised, but we don't necessarily recommend it because it doesn't take into account for uh, major bodies of water, highways. It just geographically routes them or groups them, as it says, uh, via latitude and longitude, which can be helpful to get uh, all your groups. Uh, basically your pins or jobs routed in one big geographic um, grouping, but it's not going to optimize it. So it's something we recommend recommend doing is just the manual or the paid optimization and then using the manual to drag and drop and fine tune it. But once you have them all on the screen, we're going to go in and double check the route order with the pins sequentially, one, two, three, four, and five, and so on. Next thing is a dispatch board. So this is where we actually go out and um, get the jobs out to the crews. So first thing we look at is adjusting the crew members under the more tab if required. So if we have a no call, no and show employee, we can drag and drop them on and off. And there's two reasons why this is really important. Actually three, uh, if you're using payroll functionality, it is going to make sure you have updated payroll. Uh, number two, job costing production reports. We can update how long it actually takes you to do each job based on historical data. And then the third is um, it will adjust your budgeted time and job costing. So good data in, good data out. So this is the first point to make sure we have accurate crews for job costing and everything else we've talked about. Now we go out and either print them or get them out in the mobile. I'm going to recommend the mobile. And now we've got our crews out in the field. So they're clocking in and clocking out of each job as they're doing it or hard copy paper writing that down. Um, only disadvantage of the print version is somebody's got to physically type the information in the system to get the billing and job costing done. So once these jobs are done, we're over to the closeout day screen. This is probably one of the most important screens of the whole entire system that is actually overlooked by most businesses. But this is the last point where a physical person or human can touch the billing and the information for production, payroll, and job costing. So we want to go in and give you a quick sanity check to double check um, the start and stop times and make sure it's accurate data. So we want to make sure that it's realistic. It's not a clock in and clock out under a minute. Maybe the crew showed up, did the job, forgot to clock in, and they clocked in and out, and it's under a minute, and it looks like you made over $100 an hour, maybe $1,000 an hour if it was a large job. Uh, worst case scenario is maybe you're in and out in a minute, but it was an hourly job, time and material. So we want to go in and train you two to three minutes a day to give a quick visual representation of this screen to make sure we got good data in, good data out. And then whether you bill daily, weekly, or monthly at midnight or 12 or 1, all those invoices generate automatically. And now you know by this two to three minute episode, or exercise, you have good data on your invoices and you can go out now and invoice collect. So as we go into invoice and collect, uh, we're going to go in and teach you how to click literally three buttons, how to charge your uh, credit cards, how to email them and how to print them and get paid faster. And also how to set up prepayments and installment billing. So you can go out and in a landscape situation, have mowing, bed edging, mulching, and pruning all underneath an installment plan, but maybe the training of the trees is separate. So it allows you to do a monthly installment based on the services underneath it, and then bill out the ancillary service in addition one time after it's done. Biggest mistake is when people are setting this up is the individual jobs under the installments, when they set them up, they usually associate them to the contract, which is correct, but the problem is they don't put a price or budget of time because in their mind or fear is they're going to double bill the customer. When in actuality, when it's set up correctly, they're not going to. But if you don't have any data in for job costing, obviously there's no data out. So that is a major flaw uh, when people set this up that they don't set it up correctly. So on a high level, this is what Service Autopilot looks like set up completely from stem to stern by a professional like Simple Growth. Now, I'm going to go in and actually show you what this looks like when the rubber hits the road. So as we go in here, we're in service autopilot in one of our test accounts. We're going to go into the green icon and add a lead. We're going to go in and put their first name, last name, company name, if that's a company, add their service address, and then it will automatically enter their billing address. Email, when in doubt, always put cell phone in here. And if it's a, say, a master property or property manager here, we can put them in and this, it could be a sub property of the master property. Like we did um, all the Rite Aids and Walgreens at one point in the majority of the city. So we had one property manager that managed all those properties. That's one way to tuck them underneath for um, conformity and billing and tracking. So I'm going to put in one of our test accounts here um, just as a base example. 
So far as workflow, as we're looking at this, if they came off the website, um, they would have been automatically entered in the service autopilot no double entry with an alert to actually know that you should get this estimate done. So once we've got them in here and we've got all the main information, including cell phone, we go in and the next tab under details, we want to track the account type, residential or commercial. This is going to allow for de database segmentation and reporting for automations and in the report center. Under sales, we're going to track the sales source. How do they hear about us? Was it a nine around direct mailing? And were they referred by a certain customer? So if this wasn't a test account, we'd have a list of all our leads and clients. So we can go in and say, um, in a report, what was the client lifetime referral value from that client um, before we made any hasty sales or business decisions? Because maybe we were going and saying, we're only going to service our customers that have packages or full service, but maybe Mrs. Smith, a good example of my company is we had, let's say Mrs. Smith, basically she referred 10 or 15 of her friends each year from church. She only had a spring cleanup, but her client lifetime value was astronomic. So if we went to go make a major decision that we were only going to service full year round customers, we would have alienated her. But before losing that referral source, we were able to run a report and actually get some real good data on that. So once again, good data in, good data out. So any questions live here, um, feel free to ask them. Next thing is billing. Um, this is once they become a client, but this screen here is going to give you the ability to manually override your billing. So if you were set monthly uh, to bill monthly and net due 10 was the terms, you can go in and make this manual override to bill daily and make it due in net 15 if you want it. So this is your manual override. Um, but once you have everything you want in here, we'd go in and hit save. This is a duplicate check. Obviously, we've used this as a um, test client a few times here, but that's a great feature of the system as well. In addition, we are going to go in now under more, and we're going to go in and grab the property measurements. So this is going to be Maps Pro. Highly recommend it. It's worth the few dollars extra a month to have this all in one place. So we're going to go into satellite. We're going to zoom in and measure just the turf area. So obviously, for live video here. I'm not going to go into immense detail, but within a few hundred square feet, either way, it's going to come out in the wash. So the benefit of using this here is we've got this set up nicely and we're going to go in and label it over here on the left and color code it because we want to be able to see exactly the service area we're quoting each and every time we go out to this property. Now let's say we had potentially a pool in this area. So we can go in and subtract or add areas um, throughout the process. So I'm going to label that again so we can see. And once you have everything you want, you can go in literally and save it. But I'm going to go in and actually swing this around and zoom in a little bit. So I'm going to go in quickly without a lot of detail and add in um, landscape beds. So if we wanted to go in and measure this whole bed here, um, I'll just include the sidewalk for time's sake. So we can go in and measure that bed. And that would be the area right here. We can go in again and color code that as well. So once we have that, we have the whole entire area that we're taking care of. So we can go in and hit save. Now, every time I pull up this exact property, we have a actual picture of it. Now, the other biggest question is, well, how do I take that visual representation and um, show my team that? So I don't have to be the knowledge point. So what we can do here is actually take a quick snippet of it. And when we do that, we can go in and save it. So I'm going to save this here. And through a snippet tool, you could literally go in and draw some arrows, put some notes on here, whatever that is, and save it. And the cool thing is once you save these maps to the property, as I scroll down and hit attachments, after I attach this file, your teams in the field now will be able to see it live in the mobile and have instant access to it. So once again, you're taking the knowledge in your head and actually putting it in the system for compliant, uh, for basically clear communication. So we go into attachment notes here and click this live or in the mobile, they can see an actual screenshot of the service area with some labels on it. So that would be an absolutely huge 
um, way of keeping that knowledge and what you estimated live in the system each and every time. Next question is, what if we can't measure it online? Maybe there's a lot of trees or we really just want to do an on-site estimate. We go to the A for auto assist. And if you're using the simple growth blueprint, this is how we actually tackle this. Uh, we have something called a on-site estimate form that we build out. And the, the methodology of this is you can use it on your laptop or in your mobile or your tablet predominantly. But as you're walking around, all the information loads, so there's no double entry. If I couldn't measure the square footage, I type it in here. Linear length of landscape bed. Let's say we couldn't measure that online. So maybe there's 500 linear feet of bed edging and 1,000 square feet to be edged. Now we can go in and type in the um, number of large, small, medium, large shrubs. If that's how we're estimating it. So I'm going to go in and plug some numbers in here so we can see what this looks like. And we've got hedgerows with and without a ladder. So um, this whole setup here is basically... How many ten, 10 linear feet equals one section? So I'm going to say I've got 20 feet, two sections here with a ladder and none without a ladder. And I'm going to make some notes here. So one of the biggest other issues is um, going in and setting up shrub pruning. So we've got notes for shrub pruning saying it doesn't include um, the hedgerow on the back lot line. So one of the issues is, is we're going out... Um, uh, um, west lot line, we'll say. So the issue is, is you're walking around the, the home, you're making these notes chicken scratch on a piece of paper. If it's raining, that's a disaster for sure in the making, or we just forget. So the idea is instead of creating an extra step, we just plug it in this form and everything loads in automatically. Now, obviously, if we're doing snow removal, we could put that in as well. But the idea here is to take what's in your head as you're walking around the property and take the emotion out of it and enter it in. And now the matrices behind this are going to automatically calculate a price, budgeted time, and a cost before profit. And if there's any product and materials, that'll happen in. As additionally, as a cheat sheet, we've got all the information right here. It's a residential account. This is the marketing source, and they're okay to email. So what we have here is we're going to close out the on-site estimate form and go in, and whether we measured it online or on site, we're going to hit add an estimate. And this can be done live in the mobile or tablet as well. And as we go in, we're going to select a template. So this is your pre-built template for leads and clients. And this is how we're going to standardize this workflow. The guy who ran Callahan's Lawn Care had never mowed a lawn, mulched a bed, trimmed bushes. But I was able to send him out and basically let him go out with no emotion and to continue to um, build these estimates. So one of the things as I was talking here in the live uh, rendition here, I did not save the, the property measurements. So I can show you when we go back to property measurements, I did save the view and I can show you how to save the property measurement really quickly. So pretty cool because now I can see this every time I pull it up. But what I want to do is go in where it says pool, make this a negative in the left-hand side. And I'm going to zero out these other services. And when I go to custom fields down here, I would scroll down and grab my turf square footage and hit save. Now that's saved. So when I go back to add my estimate now, all the information from that property will load automatically. Full transparency being this video here live, I forgot to click save. So we're going to go back in, grab our template, leads, apply, all our services load, and Lo and behold, that 8,900 square feet for lawn mowing load. So in the back end, fictitiously, we've created a production rate uh, that would charge $30 for 8,000 square feet, 0.4 man hours to do it, and a cost of $14.76 before profits. So we'd have a profit margin of 50%. What I've done is broken out zones or postal codes. You don't have to go to this um, level, but this is how we can tackle this. So if I put the number one in here, it calculates the average drive time for that area, budgeted time and cost. And then I would just go from draft to quote. All the consumers are going to see is lawn mowing for $38.56 man hours on site mobilization and a cost before profit of $20.67. And I know my net profit is $45 and six or 45%. Now, if you're doing design build or anything else, in a more complex way. We figured out how to work the system to make this work. So if lawn mowing was paver patio, you can underneath here, you can have mobilization for paver patio, picking up or delivery of materials, site prep, excavation, laying the base, laying the pavers, 
uh, final cuts. Each and every step sequentially would be here and they would marry up perfectly on your on-site estimate form. So we take what's in the estimator's head and create a virtual estimating checklist where you're plugging in the variables and then the price, budgeted time and cost automatically come into the estimate form here and all you need to do is hit quote. Uh, if you're doing fertilization, um, same thing, all the square footage is load, the price Put round loads in, uh, fictitiously grub control at a higher material cost and a different production rate. So we can have that granularity. Um, spring cleanup. We have $150 based on the square footage, $3, three hours based at 50 bucks per hour. And we've basically gone in and defaulted a disposal fee. So this disposal fee, as we went to delegate it, would imaginary, like basically just not show up. Our, our estimator would sharpen their pencil basically to get the job. So now what should always happen on the estimate should happen. And if it's not there, you know your estimator has cheated you or you've forgotten yourself. And we've added these drive time to postal codes again. So we hit the number one, we go in and uh, it's $115 there, uh, 1.42 hours, because we've got less jobs that we need to spread um, that mobilization time across. It gives you that granularity. So if we go in and hit draft a quote, we have a spring cleanup. Now, if you are using subcontractors, this is one way we work this system. So based on that, our subcontractor gave us their cost. So it's $100 and we gave them the drive time. Uh, they did not charge us disposal. So we have $295 for our, inter our cost to the client up here. And then the 215 is our, our internal audit trail of what we're paying the sub. So we'd leave this in draft, but now if there was an ever issue in my office, my office didn't have to call me. They could go back and be reliant on the estimate. Once again, we're delegating responsibility and knowledge. Great way to do that in service autopilot. Final thing is shrub pruning. So what we're looking at here is we've got our Shrub pruning for small, medium, and large shrubs and hedgerows and dump fees. So it automatically calculated a price, budget, time, and cost for each one of those shrubs, as well as defaulted a, dr a dump fee. We're going to go in and grab that same postal code and add the average drive time, mobilization. So now if we go in and hit draft, $547 for the job. The client has no idea how we broke this out. We've got 9.07 hours to do it and a cost before profit of 30 $337.83 with a profit margin net of 38.3%. Now, one thing we would have forgotten to do is go in and write the notes that it did not include the hedgerow on the back of the lot line. If you saw when I filled out that on-site estimate form, that would force me to go in and click this button, type it in and do that. Now it automatically merges in and you'll see that in a second. So as we scroll down now, we are going to go down and hit save. Obviously, try to close them over the phone or in person. If we can't do that, then we need to email this out. And we're buying time back by this systemized process. We're going to go in and hit email. A pre-templated email loads up, and we're going to grab that as well. Uh, this is our rendition of it, how we did it. But basically, we've got our logo, some verbiage here, a clickable quote link two clickable buttons to either call or text us if they're on their mobile, and our lead letter, the five or six main reasons why we're different, and some testimonials on here. So obviously you could um, add to this or customize if you want, but the idea is really to go in and set it and forget it, hit send. Now this is being sent to the client, and I'm gonna hop on my other screen and grab my email and show you what the final product looks like to the client and what it looks like back in SA when they actually accept the estimate. So once again, this is what it looks like to be fully set up in service autopilot, set up by a certified advisor, so um, just like simple growth here. And this is how we tackle it. So not only do we give you the best workflow and everything else, but we set it up and then train you how to do it. So this is now on the inside of what your consumer is going to see. And this is uh, the same exact email. My, I'm your future consumer. Now I'm going to click on view my proposal. And this doesn't have to look exactly like this. This is a boilerplate example. Um, but step one, select your services. Step two, accept and sign. So as a proof of concept, we've put all the contract verbiage from lawn mowing here. I recommend keeping it on the bottom, but some people like to have it here. So I show you, you can do it. $38.09 for the lawn mowing. That is including our drive time and onsite. The consumer has no idea that we've broken that out. We, in addition, we can have a video that plays live inside the estimate. 
And that live estimate video is extremely important if you elect to do it, because what it should include, in my opinion, is what's included, what's not included, and overcome any sales or price objections, such as do I need to be home or are you going to close the fence gate behind you? So we're creating a higher perceived value by framing you as the expert in this video and shortening that sales cycle because we've addressed any of the sales concerns up front. So if the consumer wants that, they click on that and it's there. Uh, residential spring cleanup, we've got it 295. They have no idea we're subcontracting this out for $215. And shrub pruning, we've broken it down by size of shrub and linear length of hedgerow with or without a ladder, all three sides. And special job notes, look at that, does not include hedgerow on back west lot line. So now we've included our on site um, verbiage on the contract itself. As we scroll down, we've got invoice details, contract terms, some more clickable buttons. Uh, we love videos. We've got our top nine services that play live inside the estimate. And we've got some different areas where, as a proof of concept, you could put MSD labels and different things like that that you may need by state law. And the final thing is they can go in and click, sign the estimate with their finger or their mouse, print their name, and accept. Now, immediately after this, within about two minutes, I will get an email confirming I've signed up for the service. And when I go back into service autopilot, we scroll back down. Here and close this out, and this will automatically be updated. So now the service is estimate level is marked to one automatically. It's going to notify us that this person is one and we need to schedule them. We've got our signature information, time and date stamped with IP address. And under attachments, I've got a printable PDF with just the services the consumer checked off all the way down to the bottom. Believe it or not, complete with electronic signature. So if you have by law, you need electronic signature or collections. You have everything you need all in one system. So if this is something you're interested, uh, please let me know. Simple Growth does this as a done-for-you solution. So we set it up. We take the information that's out of your head. We use our pricing matrix blueprint. Um, and before I end the video here, I'll show you how that actually looks. But it's actually a pretty cool system. So we go in and take that solution there and give you a blueprint. So I use the analogy, we just don't uh, teach you how to fish, or I mean, we don't just give you a fish, we teach you how to fish. And this is um, the beauty of what we do here, because we go in and give you this blueprint to set your services up for success from day one. So this blueprint here is really the key to success. You really don't want to implement uh, setting up services any in any software system without creating a blueprint. You're not going to build a house without a blueprint. You're definitely not going to build services without a blueprint as well. So this is what we go to um, and actually take care of with you uh, on a on a screen share or live to lot live knee to knee building it out. But let's just say we have an example of lawn mowing here, and. Lawn mowing is going to go in and say, maybe we're basing this up to 4,000 square feet. Our, so the first question we're looking at is, what are we charging per man hour? Say it's $60 per hour, and it's costing us $40 per hour break even before we make a profit. And if you don't know that number, that's fine. We can help you find that number. Um, but let's just say the lowest we're going to charge is to drop our gate is $40. So as we ask you, you say, based on that, that's going to cover up to 4,000 square feet to mow below an edge. And based on your experience, it's going to take you 20 minutes. So 0.33 man hours. So 20 minutes for one person. So based on these numbers, we go in and calculate your break evens. And this is what it's costing you before you make uh, a profit. So you've got $26 profit on the base price and a 67% profit margin. So every 1,000 square feet over 4,000, maybe, is going to take you four minutes to mow below an edge. So based on your number of $60, uh, we'd go in and build a custom formula to calculate the pricing for you. So you'd be charging $4 per thousand, and it would be costing you $2.66 before profit. So now we have a blueprint based on square foot or production rates, and we can take these five cells across the top and the five cells across the bottom and build that right into Service Autopilot. So if we go into um, the services in Service Autopilot, this is our blueprint. This is going to show you how to be self-sufficient and build these yourself 
after we're done building them for you. So if you ever need to update them, you want to build more, we've given you the plans. But we would set the, cal set the calculation. We'd set the custom field and build that out. But then these three or five cells right here are going to line up identically to the top five cells here. So all you do is transfer them over if you ever needed to update them. So let's say your cost to operate next year jumps up to 45. When I hit enter, that 1320 now just jumped up to 1485. So we've given you the blueprint how to update this pricing each and every year without having to be reliant on our consulting or help. But we're obviously always here to help. In addition, if you don't have a production rate, but you know what's in your head and how long it should take, we can build this out in minutes or hours. So let's just say we've got the same example on the bottom. This can be based out on minutes or hours. So if we went in and said, in our head, we plugged in our on-site estimate form and said, based on my experience, I think it's going to take 18 minutes. So anywhere between one and 20 minutes, it's going to calculate that base price of $40, 20 minutes to do it, and a cost before profit. So these are identical. So we've got based on production, what's in your head. So this is the first step. And then we're going to track the turf square footage in six to eight months from now, we're going to be able to run those reports and get non-emotional production rate based on your equipment and your guys and girls in the field. Um, next thing is we're going to base every one minute over the base price of 20 minutes as a dollar a minute, one minute and a cost of 66 cents based on your actual cost in desired billable man hours. And once again, these top five cells and the bottom five cells are going to line up identical to the matrix in SA, these five and these five. So we've given you a proven system to be self-reliant and run the system with success from day one. So this is the way we set up service autopilot. And this is the way Simple Growth tackles it for a standardized um, production rate based estimating system, whether you're um, still got the information in your head and you know how long it's going to take or you've standardized it. We can evolve in that system in a done for you manner. So um, hopefully this was helpful, but this is what we look at for a fully set up service autopilot system from the ground up from day one. So comments and questions, drop them below. Um, there will be a recorded version of this on uh, the Simple Growth Facebook page for everyone to check out. And um, drop me a private uh, message if you would like some pricing on this as well.